On this episode of Bucks County Paranormal Investigations, the team investigates the historic Plumsteadville Inn. Is it haunted? That's what we're here to find out. Stay tuned as Bucks County Paranormal Investigations investigates the Plumsteadville Inn. My name is Eric Mintel. By night, I'm a professional jazz musician. But by even later at night, I investigate the paranormal. I, along with my team at Bucks County Paranormal Investigations, travel the country investigating all things paranormal. This is Bucks County Paranormal Investigations. Hey, I'm Matt George and I'm the owner of the Plumstead Villa Inn. Entrepreneur and restaurant owner Matt George continues the tradition of a fine dining experience and impeccable customer service. Matt owned Magia's Friendly Italian on Susquehanna Street in Allentown, Lehigh Valley, PA. Now, Matt has brought that same sense of pride and customer service to the Plumsteadville Inn. This restaurant holds a special place in Matt's heart and the hearts of the community. Bucks County Paranormal Investigations was brought in to unravel some long-standing mysteries. You know, it's been a while since everyone's been on the case, so I'm so glad we're all together tonight. And I gotta tell you, already Karen and Dom have picked up on so much energy here. And again, it's one of these great venues in Bucks County that is just off the charts with paranormal activity. Karen and Dominic head into the ballroom and immediately Dominic picks up on something. My father's here. Oh, absolutely, so absolutely. He actually had his 40th birthday party in this room and it was a really good time for him. And I'm getting a validation for that, which is like tingles across my back. Yep. Um, he looks very happy. His heyday, I feel he like his heyday, day, where he's yes. really enjoying himself. I keep seeing dark glasses on him. Um, I keep seeing that and I'm seeing with him too, there's some kind of um, awards or something that he had received. Yes. There's a red, white and blue ribbon with, um, something on the top, like a medal or something that I'm seeing with him. He was in the Air Force. Oh, so thank you, thank he did, you. He did receive some medals when he was there. Yeah. He also received awards in his business and was honored by the different manufacturers for being an outstanding service technician across the United States. Thank you, and so, someone yeah. still has those medals. I have, I, I have a couple, and I actually have, from the Air Force, I have his medals that were pins from his uniform and his hat. And with him, I keep getting uh, feeling a little, it feels upset in my stomach area towards the end, but I'm getting up here in the lung area that there's something uh, wrong at the end. Yeah, he passed away of cancer, lung cancer. Okay. But yeah, I mean, this was, his, this was a good time for him. So. Your dad definitely watches over it. He's passing on his love to you. Please know that he goes with you wherever you go. We decided to start the investigation in the ballroom. I, I keep getting a headache in this room. Big time. Really? Yeah, big time on the side of my head. I feel like it's someone that was more recent history. An older gentleman might have lived to be around the age of 90. Again, another party for this gentleman, but he had a problem here in the head. Uh, he's got a sense of humor too. He just said that he was senile towards the end. <laughs> um, but I feel like in his heyday, he would have been a real fun guy. Around the same time and keeping it lighthearted, Dave was getting an uncomfortable feeling. Now it just feels a little uncomfortable. I don't know, I can't describe it. I'm not that in tune, but something's a little uncomfortable. At that exact time, we all heard a huge bang coming from the other side of the room. What was that? Wow, I don't know. That was weird. Let's go investigate. Nice, yeah. sure. We're here. Your tripod's now on the floor. Yeah, but, okay, see that, Tom? It was on the chair, wasn't it? Was it was on the chair. It flat was on, on the chair. It was flat on the chair. There was no way that could have come off. That was just that flat. That felt, too. Interesting, right well, when I said I felt uncomfortable. Wow. Was it? Yeah, that was just the like, other piece? That was just when you felt, uh, when you said you felt uncomfortable. Something's a little uncomfortable. There's just a sound back well, there. Well, again, again, okay. Yeah, I know there's a sound over there. Well, again. Well, they said that's characteristic here, didn't they? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, um, some things, and we just, we just, you just saw this real time here. This was flat, that tripod was flat on the chair, and it just can, and that was even on the table. That thing was on the table. The, uh, the, uh, mics were, the mic case was on the table. Well, they're definitely active here, that's for sure. Definitely. Well, Tom, I'm glad you had that rolling, man, but this piece, that was crazy. I mean, again, we shouldn't be surprised because this is this kind of stuff happens a lot. But, uh, but this is this is very this is very unusual for us here. Yeah, they catch it live. A lot of times, you catch it with a static cam or something. Or we'll catch it in the in the editing process. Yep. You know, Post. most of the time, yeah. Uh, when we review the footage, but this just happened right now, so that's really. Uh, now I got this like uncomfortable feeling all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, that's what I had before yeah. when I was over there when you were talking to me. Hmm. Trying to make a joke, but I was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe weird. they didn't like the joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. See? All right, we'll leave. Did you hear the knocking? Right. Almost on cue, we all heard two distinct knocks in the corner. Tup. Tup. Mm. Oh, my God. Here again. Click, click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We slowly made our way back to the corner, but when we arrived... We just came over here, the sound's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's totally gone now. That's weird. That's and great. Now that now this, it stopped. Uh-huh. Totally stopped. Not even 15 minutes into the investigation and already we're getting a lot of paranormal energies. What else does this night have in store for our intrepid investigators? You know, Dave and I got here earlier and we pretty much walked around the entire inn and um, we were told a few things uh, that I guess, you know, things that have happened over the years. And then, so earlier too, we were talking to Dom. All right, so I'm getting fire. I can smell it. I can, the, the smoke is here, it's heavy. But it, it was a long time ago. Both of these guys, Dominic and Karen, we have not said one word to them. Right. We've been talking to the proprietor and he's been telling us inside stuff. I can't wait to see what else they, they're going to pick up on. That's why we don't want to say anything. We want to make sure so you can see. Yeah, that's why we haven't reactions. told them anything. That's right. Yeah, right. We're see, you're seeing the reactions in real time. What are you feeling up here? A lot of mischief. Hmm. Meaning, I feel there's a lot of activity in these first rooms when you come upstairs. I keep seeing objects being moved in rooms, even knocks on doors when there's no one there. Let's, let's keep going. Let's Absolutely. Keep going. Okay. And by the way, lots of electrical problems or, do, or what seems like problems, even down this next hallway where we will be going. We're going. Let's go. Karen was drawn to the same area Dominic was earlier. We decided to pull out the magnetometer and test Karen's theory on the electronic disturbances. Yes. Holy moly, we right. have 2.3? And this, yes, like this door, I'm going to take this, okay. Something over in this area, so I'm going to lean it right in here. So right here, guys, this is where it, all this energy is being felt right here. In the, yes. in, in the, so let's open it. I got a master key, so let's look, give this a shot, see what's in here. So as you can see, it's a closet. There's no, nothing electrical in here. Yes, but I wonder if somebody hid in there. Yeah. They mm -hmm. changed the design of the, well, there is so a, they could put other things okay. in there. All right, so you guys are picking up on and something. And there is a difference in the floor, yeah. in the yes. floorboards there. So that is there, the original there floor. There might have been something about that. Okay, well, if you want to, you want to know something about that, um, and you guys are right in the vicinity. It used to be part of the Underground Railroad. What? So this, that could be That's a hidden somebody staircase. somebody hid in there. Yep. Yep. That's what I said. I That's feel like somebody hid in there. Our cameraman, Tom Brunt, told us a story about Buckingham Mountain being a safe haven for escaped slaves. Well, that's nearby here in the region, of course, and, and that was a place where they were, they were kind of considered free. I mean, they lived safely, and it was run by the Quakers, and uh, it seems quite possible that they would be, you know, from here, they would make it to Buckingham Mountain. Here in Bucks County and 10 miles north of Plumstedville, freed slaves sheltered and worked on Buckingham Mountain. Quakers treated the freed slaves as equals to them, 
especially Big Ben Jones, a gentle giant standing almost seven feet tall. In 1833, Jones escaped from York, Maryland slave owner William Anderson and sought refuge on Buckingham Mountain. In 1844, Anderson found out that Jones was living on Buckingham Mountain. After a heroic battle with bounty hunters, Ben was captured and badly injured. Jones was then sent to Philadelphia to board a boat for York, Maryland unless $700 could be paid for him. The Quakers loved Ben and had no choice but to raise the money and buy him, thus making him a free man. He returned to Buckingham Mountain and married Sarah Johnson and lived in peace until his passing in 1875. Don, are you getting anything as far as like the Underground Railroad? I haven't felt it yet, but I think once we go downstairs into the basement area, I'll definitely pick up a lot more. Tom, I didn't know that you were so knowledgeable about this, so you're going to be our scholar now. <laughs> Before heading to the basement, we picked up on high energy readings in room 208. Oh yeah, and this is, the energy is going up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on, Dave. Do I have to? <laughs> What's it reading? Uh, it's gone down exactly where I'm standing, so again, back over here, Towards that closet. When I go back over this way, sorry, mm -hmm. to towards the closet, um, right here it's going up and down. Here. Is it more here? Keep in mind, we're in the room next to the closet where Karen was getting all of those high energy readings. We didn't get any more energy readings from this room, so we decided to go down to the basement to see if there were any extra ties to the Underground Railroad. So what are you getting on me this way? What are you getting on the meter, Karen? Uh, it's a 10, 9.7, 10. Yeah. It could be the electronics, <sighs> okay. but. Wow. Yeah, these are the old walls. Yeah, and. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is definitely the old look, section. Look at the beams. Yeah. Hey, Davey, check this out. Yeah. Mm. Look at these old beams down here. See that? Oh, yeah. There we go. That was a stairwell that went up all yep. the time. How's the, how's the meter? Look at this old chair, Tom. It's around 1.6. All right, guys, guys, check this out. Look at this mm. old chair. Put the, Karen, put the uh, meter in there and see what kind of Let's reading see if we, we get. get anything here. I'm going to set it down. No, not a point, 5.6. Point but that's still high. Dave, that's, that's like, that, 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 that has never gone that high just yeah. sitting there, you know? My throat is really dry down here. As Karen keeps picking up on some energy in the basement, my brand new flashlight starts acting up. You know? You know, here again, here we go again with a flashlight. Now this is a brand new flashlight and it's completely getting drained again. Well, and I wonder if there's anything back there in that back corner. And this keeps going up higher and higher. It's at 2.2, really? 2.1, 2.2. I feel like there could be something back in this area. Upon reviewing the footage, we were shocked to hear what sounds like a cry coming from the corner. There could be something back in this area, in this area. Uh, I am picking up that there was a tunnel down here. I do want to lean back over to the right from where we are right now. You've got goosebumps too. Uh, I can yes, see I know. My, my, my hair tunnel? is standing up. That's yeah. a validation that the issue or whatever we're talking about is over in that area. And I want to go over there yeah. with this to see if this goes higher because it might have been over right, that area. All right, let's go check it out. Let's see. No, it was more this way. There we go. There we go. That's what we're talking about. So it might have been right there in that area. And look, there's a little, there's a, I mean, they may have done repairs or something, but there's a square here. Yeah. Yeah. There's, the patch I was yeah, there's a divot. Now, all right, there's got to be something mm. crazy. Well, that could here. go, well, that could go right out to the outside and then they could be picked up right out, outside. Yeah, but this would be underground. Now, there's, there's a room. It was in this area that the magnetometer had its highest reading. Or something over there, the way the pipes go through that wall. Huh. That's telling me there's something over there. It was getting late, and we decided to wrap up the investigation at the Plumsteadville Inn. But now we leave with more questions than answers. You know, it blows me away that that magnetometer is getting such high readings. I mean, all over the place. I mean, we've never had that go that high on any investigation. So it tells me a couple of things. Uh, there's a lot of residual energies here.
Karen's picking up on it, Dom is picking up on it, Dave is even picking up on it. Yeah, I know, I've been feeling a lot of stuff that I don't normally feel on these investigations. Uh, usually I'm pretty much just middle of the road, but this I get these, go between these uncomfortable feelings and then kind of like weird claustrophobic feeling. And then when we were in the ballroom, and that shook me up a little bit. Our investigation was over, but was it? We encountered many strange anomalies and some of the most compelling paranormal energies this team has ever experienced. As with most cases, we leave with more questions than answers. The Plumsteadville Inn remains a beautiful and historic Bucks County destination. Consistent product, consistent cleanliness, and consistent service. These are the three hallmarks Matt George lives by. Come experience the Plumsteadville Inn today.